What's happening, y'all? Welcome inside the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Bush coming at you solo today, basically to break down some dynasty trades. You guys know our famous series, Dynasty Decisions, where we go over your dynasty teams, your dynasty rosters, and talk about you know some of the trades that you guys make, some of the rookie picks, et cetera, et cetera, all the decisions relating to dynasty fantasy football. Well, this was suggested by Wyatt in the Discord that I go over the dynasty trades that you guys have made throughout the season, give my thoughts on them for rebuilders, contenders, etc. And I'll just be doing that solo today. So if you guys do enjoy this video at any point, hit the like button. It helps us grow. It helps us out tremendously. Comment any of your thoughts down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new as well. If you guys want to become a member of the channel, you can do so by going to our YouTube page and hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. So without further ado, guys, we're going to hit the intro and then we're going to get right into this. All right, so with each trade, I'm going to basically give some overall context at the beginning of the trade, scoring format, you know, rebuilder, contender, et cetera. Go over the trade. The trade will be on the screen the whole time I'm talking about it. And basically what we're doing in this video, because for those of you guys maybe that don't play Dynasty, you guys maybe are interested in playing Dynasty this offseason, the biggest part of Dynasty, the thing that we have to do as Dynasty players, my job as a Dynasty analyst and a fantasy football analyst, is we need to assign values to these players and determine if the market is higher or lower. It's not simply, you know, this tr player for that player who scores more fantasy points. It is a matter of taking advantage of the market. So if you believe a player, let's say DeAndre Swift, for example, is worth two first round picks and the market is willing to pay three or four first round picks for DeAndre Swift, then you should probably be willing to sell him and vice versa, right? Like you, let's say you think Darnell Mooney, for example, is worth a second round rookie pick and the market is willing to give you only a third round rookie pick, then it benefits you to keep Darnell Mooney. So that's basically what we want to be doing in dynasty trades. We always want to be capitalizing on what the market thinks relative to our objective, you know, rational point of view that we think, you know, this player is worth less or more than what the market is thinking. So we're going to start with Mike's trade. First trade on the docket here today. He made this preseason. So he made this before the season started. It is a super flex PPR league, and he is in a productive struggle, meaning he is rebuilding. And this is the trade on the screen right now. So DeAndre Swift, Jalen Hurts, and a 2022 second. We're just going to assume it's mid uh, to late right now because we don't actually know where the guy is picking as of right now. And he traded that away in exchange for Russell Wilson, Darnell Mooney, and Elijah Moore. So clearly you get younger at your uh, quarterback position going from Russell Wilson to Jalen Hurts. You shave off, you know, seven, eight years of age there. DeAndre Swift, obviously a very, very, a uh, high priority piece of dynasty right now. In my opinion, I have him as a top three dynasty running back, a guy that is firmly in the first round range for me. So I would say Mike did a great job here because DeAndre Swift is by far the best uh, you know, piece of this package. And I would prefer Jalen Hurts to Russell Wilson in dynasty right now. Now at the beginning of the season, I might not have said that, but Jalen Hurts has played well enough, in my opinion, to warrant a little bit more time for Philadelphia on top of the fact that this quarterback class isn't very good. And despite Philadelphia having three first round picks, they might not be in the quarterback market. And if they are, it's probably for a guy like Deshaun Watson. And even in that scenario, we probably assume that Jalen Hurts is part of that package. Maybe he goes to the Texans as the starting quarterback there, and he's still going to be relevant, at least for fantasy. So I think by far and away, De uh, DeAndre Swift, the best piece in this deal. I would say Jalen Hurts, probably the second best piece in this deal. Russell Wilson, the third best piece in this deal. Elijah Moore. Uh, the second rounder, and then Darnell Mooney. So you got, you know, three of the top five pieces in this trade. I think you did a great job here. DeAndre Swift, to me, was probably worth this package by himself, let alone the fact that you got Jalen Hurts in a second rounder in exchange for Russell Wilson, Darnell Mooney, and Elijah Moore. So great job to Mike. Great textbook trade that if you're trying to go from, you know, maybe a contender, move some older pieces like Russell Wilson to a productive struggle, that is how you do it. So we're going to go on to Leonardo's trade. It is a super flex league. And he says the first rounder that he receives in this trade is going to be late. So what he did was he acquired Calvin Ridley. And I'm assuming he, he made this trade when Calvin Ridley had left the team and it, this, the future was kind of uncertain for Calvin Ridley. So he got Calvin Ridley in exchange for Chris Godwin, Devontae Freeman, and two third rounders. Now, uh, Calvin Ridley and Chris Godwin, to me, assuming Calvin Ridley is, you know, going to be back with Atlanta next year. Now that is, you know, somewhat of a, a risky assumption because you don't know what's going on in the guy's head. Maybe he retires. Maybe he's just done with football. We have no idea at this point, but for, you know, the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to assume Calvin Ridley is back in 2022. And again, that, that comes with some risk, but if he is back, 
Chris Godwin has now torn his ACL. So obviously this trade is a little bit more favorable for Leo now that Chris Godwin is coming off of a major injury next year. And we don't even know, you know, 100% if he's going to be ready for week one at the same time. So Calvin Ridley to me and Chris Godwin are pretty equivalent in value. They both have some risk. They're both around the same age. They're both talented, you know, uh, in their prime type of wide receivers right now. The first rounder for Devontae Freeman and the two third round picks is a pretty easily uh, the first rounder side of that thing. So give me Leo now that Chris Godwin has torn his ACL. If Chris Godwin was healthy going into free agency, about to get a big payday, I might have leaned the Chris Godwin side. But now that we've seen Chris Godwin tear his ACL and going to be coming off of an injury, we don't know what team he's going to sign with. We don't know if Tampa Bay is going to re-sign him. Whatever the case is, I think this trade is probably in favor of Leo now. Maybe you came into this year in win now mode. Maybe you're trying to win the championship and you you know suffered a bunch of injuries. Maybe you lost McCaffrey. Maybe you lost whatever the case is. I think Calvin Ridley is a perfect piece to go acquire right now for a retooling team. And what I mean by a retooling team is a team that is ready to compete next year, but is out of things this year, obviously with the fantasy playoffs going on. A rebuilding team is more so 2023 and beyond. A retooling team means maybe you had an unlucky year. Maybe a couple things didn't go your way and you're just looking to move a couple pieces to help retool your team for the next year. I think Calvin Ridley is a perfect guy to acquire. Again, we don't know what's going on inside the guy's head, but I, I, I tend to believe that he's going to be back in 2022. Now, let's move on to uh, Jadoyo's trades. This is a single quarterback league. It is a contending team. And I'm actually going to make an example of this guy a little bit. So cover your ears, uh, Jadoyo, if I'm talking about you right now. But this is what you don't want to do. And this is a good thing that he brought this to my attention, right? Because I think a lot of people fall into this trap. And I personally have fallen into this trap as well. When you're in season and you smell that championship, right? Like you look at your team and you're like, I have a good enough team to win. Sometimes you can make, you know, lackluster trades in efforts to bolster your team. And you always rationalize it with, at least if I win the championship, this was all worth it. But at the same time, you need to take an objective look at your team and say, is this going to make me the favorite? Or is this going to make me a top three team in my league? If you're, you can't say comfortably that you're a top three team in your league in a trade where you're going to be sacrificing some good value, then I would say it's probably not worth making that trade. I'm, I'm much rather go out and acquire a smaller piece in exchange for lower draft capital or a younger piece that hasn't produced yet, as opposed to making a blockbuster, I'm contending now type of trade, like some of the ones that he did here. So we're going to start with the first trade. Antonio Brown, Robert Woods, and the 202 were acquired in exchange for Rondell Moore, a 2023 first, and a 2022 third. Now, on the surface, I don't think this is a terrible trade. This is not the one I have the big problem with. Antonio Brown and Robert Woods definitely at the time, obviously we didn't know both of them were going to get injured would have helped his team, you know, potentially win a championship. The 2022 202, I think that is a more valuable pick than Rondell Moore is worth right now. So those, you know, two assets just kind of cancel each other out. So you essentially traded a third rounder in 2022 and a first rounder in 2023 for Antonio Brown and Robert Woods. I don't think that's a bad trade to make at all. If you're a contending team and if you're going to be competing for a championship, Maybe you're sacrificing a little bit of value in that trade because those are both older wide receivers that come 2023 might not even be very fantasy relevant anymore, but I'm okay stomaching that trade to win a championship in the next two years. So that one I think was probably fine, but of course, both of those guys get injured. And he also uh, told me that he lost a number of other pieces, Derrick Henry, DJ Chark, Darren Waller, Daryl Henderson, Adam Thielen, et cetera. This second trade is the one I really have a problem with though. Alvin Kamara was acquired, right? Obviously you're trying to win now. This is an elite fantasy running back. In exchange for Antonio Gibson, I, I would rather have Antonio Gibson straight up than Alvin Kamara. Now, that might shock a lot of people, maybe if, if you're a redraft player versus a dynasty player. But again, you can make the argument right now that Antonio Gibson is close to the same value as Alvin Kamara, except he is three to four years younger. He has way less wear on his tires. And this is a guy that has you know some untapped potential. We could see him into that Christian McCaffrey role as soon as next season. So Antonio Gibson, to me, is a guy that I would prefer straight up to Alvin Kamara. You also give uh, you also give up Donovan Peoples-Jones, who I think is about a third round value in terms of a young wide receiver that I think has shown some flashes here and there. And then you also give up a very late first round pick. So uh, 110 to 112 is basically what he said. And a 2024 first, which is about a mid pick. So you're giving up two first rounders and Antonio Gibson and Donovan Peoples-Jones to go get Alvin Kamara. That is too rich for me. If you had given up Antonio Gibson and Donovan Peoples-Jones or Antonio Gibson and a 2024 first, I'm okay making this trade, but I think you just simply gave up too much value to chase that championship. And I think this was an ill-advised move. I think I probably would have stopped after the first move that you made. And if it didn't work out, then it didn't work out. And you, you know, chalk it up to experience retool next year. And then this trade, obviously, I'm not also a big fan of this one. This is a, a junk trade for some kind of pieces that you definitely want to hold on to. So basically he traded away Alan Lazard and a 2022 late second round pick, which I think 
The second rounder, I think, is the best asset in this entire trade, which, I mean, again, might shock some people, but that second round pick has more value than any of the pieces that he acquired. Randall Cobb, Matt Breida, Russell Gage. These guys are all roster clutter. Like maybe you use these guys in your flex on a bye week or whatever, but aside from that, these guys are not long-term contributors to your team. So the fact that you gave up an asset like a second round pick that can be used either in a trade or you can just spend it on a rookie, I think you definitely... Uh, overpaid for this, you know, package of not really uh, too much. So if I were, um, if I were you, I would have stopped after the first trade. And if it didn't work out, it didn't work out. I think you kind of panicked and kept making trades here uh, because you saw your lead slipping away. And he actually did mention he was in first at one point. Now he lost his bye week. He is in a position to make it to the next round. And if he wins a championship with some of these pieces, Antonio Brown, uh, most notably, who's going to be in a great spot the next two weeks, then it is definitely somewhat worth it. But I do think he gave up a little bit too much. Uh, for what he received. So Brand Carmichael, the next guy that we're going to talk about, the next trade we're going to talk about, would still have tw- uh, four 2022 firsts after this trade. Now, he didn't send me what the scoring format was, but for the purposes of this, I'm just going to assume it's Superflex just because most of our audience plays in Superflex Dynasty League. So this is the trade that he ended up making. Stefan Diggs and Amari Cooper is what he acquired. He is a contending team, clearly, and he had a lot of draft capital in order to make this trade. So I don't hate it if you're in that position. Maybe during the startup, you collect six, seven first round picks. And you use those pieces to, um, you know, push your chips to the middle. Once you realize maybe my team is more ready to compete than I initially anticipated. I'm going to shove my chips to the middle and try and make a championship push this season when I maybe originally anticipated it being next year. So he traded away two late first this year, uh, a second this year and a, a first in 2023 and a second in 2023. So three first round picks and two second round picks in exchange for Stefan Diggs and Amari Cooper. Again, this is an overpay in my opinion. I think you paid too much. But again, if you can win the championship and you still have all those first round picks, four first round picks in 2022 after this trade, it's not like you have no draft capital and you're completely screwed. So in that position, I don't mind making a trade like this, but I think if you shave the 2023 first off this deal, this is a phenomenal deal for you. If you give up a second in 2022, a second in 2023 and two first uh, late next year, then I think this is probably a much better deal. I think you overpaid just a bit, but again, if it works out for you, it works out for you. So I'm not going to be too mad at this trade. I just think this this package is probably, I would equate Stefan Diggs' value to about a, a, a 2022 first and the two seconds. That's probably how I would equate Stefan Diggs' value. Then you're talking about, you know, a, a two first for, for Amari Cooper. So I think, again, if you, if you say that Amari Cooper's value is a late 2022 first, I think I'd probably agree there. And then a late first and uh, two seconds for Stefan Diggs is probably equivalent value. I think the 2023 first was just a little bit too much to give up in this point of the trade. Metzger Chef, the next trade that we're going to talk about here, 12-man super flex half PPR. Terry McLaurin, Darnell Mooney, and Jarvis Landry is what he acquired in exchange for Calvin Ridley, Chase Claypool, and Jacoby Myers. Now, again, this trade is pretty easily to diagnose for me because I think as you go down this trade, you can kind of make parallels to each one of these guys. Terry McLaurin and Calvin Ridley, about the same age, both young, young, talented wide receivers. I would favor Terry McLaurin, again, because of the Calvin Ridley unknown factor of it because we don't know what's going on inside the guy's head. We don't know if he's going to come back and play football anytime soon. So I would favor Terry McLaurin on that part of the trade. Darnell Mooney versus Chase Claypool. I I think Chase Claypool is a a pretty sizable amount ahead of a guy like Darnell Mooney. He has the frame. He has the, you know, the rookie season. He hasn't produced to a high level quite yet this year, but uh, this is a guy that is going to be getting probably a quarterback upgrade in the coming seasons. And I think he is a young, talented wide receiver. And he just kind of has to mature a little bit. And eventually, I think he'll be a great dynasty asset. So Darnell Mooney versus Chase Claypool in that part of the trade, I think he kind of got ripped off there. Jarvis Landry, Jacoby Myers, I kind of think is just a wash. Jarvis Landry, if you're a contending team, I think is slightly more valuable than what Jacoby Myers offers. But I think Jacoby Myers is kind of just the same exact type of receiver, reincarnated, but a little bit younger. So Jacoby Myers versus Landry, uh, kind of a wash there. So I think overall, this is a fair trade. I would slightly lean the Chase Claypool side. If I'm, if I had to pick one, uh, but I think this is a pretty fair trade overall, uh, moving on to the next trade that we have here, Josh Chacho, one quarterback PPR dynasty league. He did this trade back in September. So this was early in the season, maybe before week one or in the late preseason time that he did this trade. And I think this is the perfect example of capitalizing on what I talked about at the beginning of the video, capitalizing on what the market thinks about something. So pre Jamar chase breakout, you were able to get Jamar chase for this package, right? He traded away. Austin Eckler and Cortland Sutton, who are two, you know, solid win now pieces. Cortland Sutton, maybe not so much because he hasn't been producing lately, but Austin Eckler for sure is a guy that is going to help somebody win a fantasy championship. But you are able to get Jamar Chase, two firsts, and Chuba Hubbard. Now, 
he said he was a contender coming into the season. So he didn't intend on making a trade like this, but this is simply an opportunity to capitalize on somebody overpaying somebody who, you know, really, really wants Austin Eckler to help them win a championship to the point that they're going to give up a guy like Jamar Chase, who I think is worth Eckler and Sutton by himself, let alone with Chuba Hubbard and two firsts on top of his side of the deal. So I think uh, you absolutely fleeced him, Josh. This is a great trade. Perfect example of capitalizing on someone that is, you know, laser focused on a championship, which is, you know, something that is okay in dynasty, but at the same time, you can't give up this much value in order to win a championship. Because even if this guy's, if this guy wins, he's going to be set back for a while, giving up those two firsts. And apparently one of these firsts is going to be early too. So if you're able to pull Jamar Chase, Traylon Burks, and, you know, um, Chris Olave out of this deal, plus Chuba Hubbard in exchange for, you know, Cortland Sutton and uh, Austin Eckler, I think this is an absolute smash. Uh, for Josh in his side of the deal. So let's get into Wyatt's trades. And he is actually the person who has suggested this idea. So I'm letting him have a number of trades that I'm going to go over for him. But he did send me a lot of trades and I told him to narrow it down a little bit. So these are the trades that he made. And in both of these leagues, it's a 10 team PPR tight end premium super flex. They're two different leagues, but they're both the same scoring format. The first two are rebuilding teams, retooling teams, whatever you want to call them. And then the second two are four contenders. So trade number one is... Why, as you guys can see, why it got the Curtis Samuel and Zach Wilson side of things in exchange for Sam Darnold, a third rounder and a second rounder. Now, he didn't actually tell me when he made this trade, but I'm just going to assume this is probably around the time that Sam Darnold looked like he was coming back, looked like he was going to be a guy that was going to be a fixture in fantasy for a while and, you know, revitalize his career in Carolina. Now, obviously, we've seen that play out. We know that's probably not going to happen. I highly doubt Sam Darnold is a starting quarterback on any team next year. He's probably going to go the Mitch Trubisky route former top three pick, go behind, go and sit beside an established uh, starter. Maybe you get some work as a backup quarterback if that starter gets injured. I think that's probably where uh, Sam Darnold's career trajectory is at this point in time, which is unfortunate. But at the very least, you got Zach Wilson, who is a starting quarterback, at least for the next you know year or two, even if he is a complete bust in the NFL, right? At least he's a starting quarterback for the next couple of years. I, I think you definitely won this deal. Now, Zach Wilson in exchange for this package, I think is, is, you know, fair value. And then you also get Curtis Samuel on top of it. So I really like this trade for you. Zach Wilson, like I said, at the bare minimum is going to be a starting quarterback, at least the next year or two, even if he's a flat out bust. Now, of course I am a lot higher on Zach Wilson than a lot of people, a lot of people. And I saw somebody tweet this today. People are like, Trevor Lawrence is bad, but he could be good. Justin Fields is bad, but he could be good. We don't really know what Trey Lance is at this point. We know Mac Jones is a good quarterback, but he's not that great for fantasy. And Zach Wilson's just bad. I'm like, okay, well, how are we just dismissing Zach Wilson as already a bad quarterback, but Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and Trey Lance are immediately just assumed as, well, they're not ready yet. To me, it it seems a little unfair. I think it's pretty uh, difficult to judge any of these rookie quarterbacks at this point. I think we just need to approach them with cautious optimism because we were expecting one, one or two of these guys to come out and be Justin Herbert. And the reality of the situation is that's just not likely to happen rookie quarterbacks tend to not do what Justin Herbert did last year, or even what Joe Burrow and Kyler Murray did in their rookie season. So I think what we have to take away from the, uh, from Wilson, Lawrence fields, Lance, et cetera, is that these guys are going to follow a little bit more of a traditional quarterback path. They're looking more like Josh Allen in their rookie season, Jared Goff in their rookie season. And those guys became great fantasy quarterbacks, but they took a little bit more time to get ready, which is normal by the way, for, for rookie quarterbacks. They're not usually like Justin Herbert who come out week one or week two of the NFL season in their rookie year and immediately light it up. So that's my thoughts on Zach Wilson and the entire rookie class in general. So if you guys are looking to trade for some of those rookie quarterbacks, I do think they're pretty good investment to make. Although it is, you know, without, and it goes without saying that not all of those guys are going to work out. And maybe it's Zach Wilson, maybe it's Trevor Lawrence, maybe it's Justin Fields. It doesn't work out, but either way, I think they're a worthy risk to take. Trade number two from Wyatt. He trades for a guy that I think is at the top of people's stash list a guy that is probably going to get paid in free agency this year in Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup has a 1200 yard season under his belt has been productive. We know he's a good receiver, which is something that I think goes overlooked in dynasty. We like to buy low on players, but at the very least with Michael Gallup, we know this guy's a good player and he could go to a great landing spot. And that actually gives you a selling window right away. So if Wyatt Johnson, uh, who made this trade takes Michael Gallup and he, he got him in exchange for two third round picks and Jeremy McNichols, which I think is a complete steal of a trade because again, I, I know uh, Michael Gallup is good. I don't know those third round picks are going to turn into a good player. Think about the players that were going in the third round this year. It was guys like, you know, Des Fitzpatrick and stuff. Yes, there was, you know, the odd Elijah Mitchell, the odd, you know, Khalil Herbert or whatever, but for the most part, third round picks are not going to be a high hit 
rate type of pick. So Michael Gallup being a free agent this year, maybe he goes to the Colts, signs uh, opposite Michael Pittman Jr. Maybe he goes to the Packers. Uh, if Green Bay is back and they have Rodgers and Adams, maybe he's opposite him. Maybe he goes you know, to the Texans or something and is their number one wide receiver. We have no idea where he's going to go, but at the very least, his landing spot, uh, a lot of people are going to think of what's the best possible landing spot for him. That gives you a selling window once free agency starts. When he actually signs, potentially he'll give you a selling window depending on where he goes. And also he'll give you a selling window on the field because I think he's a good enough player to warrant that. So that's the first two trades. They were from rebuilding teams. I think they were both good. Uh, moves to make for a rebuilder still from Wyatt Johnson trades three and four are from a contending team. Again, it's still the same scoring format, 10 team PPR super flex tight end premium, but this is for contending team. And as you guys can see, it's a bit of a blockbuster here, Brandon cooks and Saquon Barkley in exchange for DJ Moore, Damian Harris, a first uh, most notably in 2023, a second in 2023, second in 2022, third and a fifth round pick. And then obviously those players as well. I think he overpaid for this one. Saquon Barkley, I, I really believe in Saquon Barkley, but at the same time, DJ Moore in a first round pick is probably all I'd be willing to give up for him because there is realistic and real things that he has as concerns, right? He has not been able to stay healthy. He has not been very, you know, efficient since his injury uh, happened with his ACL tear. And maybe, you know, that's going to impact his explosiveness going forward. And Saquon Barkley is in a messy contract situation coming up where I expect you know, Joe Judge and Dave Gettleman to all be fired after this year. The 50 year option is what Saquon Barkley is going to be playing on next year. Do they re sign him? Does he hit free agency? We, we hear that all the time that people are going to get paid in free agency, especially at running back. And that usually doesn't come to fruition. So with Saquon Barkley, there's a lot more risk than I think this trade indicates. If this is a locked and loaded, you know, Jonathan Taylor or, you know, DeAndre Swift or something like that, I'm more willing to make a trade like this. But I think Saquon Barkley has too much risk to make a trade like this. And then Brandon Cooks, who's going to be productive for a contending team immediately, has a history of concussions. He's an older wide receiver. He's not a guy that I'm really willing to invest this kind of high uh, you know, priced assets in. So I think you uh, might have overpaid for this one. But again, hopefully you can win your championship with that trade. Obviously, it makes it all semi worth it if that were to happen. The second trade, I like a lot better. And he traded uh, away Jerry Judy and James Robinson in exchange for Javante Williams. Now, this is a very easy trade for me to make. Javante Williams, to me, has firmly entrenched himself inside of the top two rounds of Dynasty startups, if not you know, the back of the first round, depending on what happens in the offseason. But Jerry Judy is going to be a guy that has, you know, is, is going to hold his value a good amount of time because he was, uh, you know, the 15th overall pick. We've heard rumors of Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, potentially going to Denver. If that happens, you get a big selling window with them. And then James Robinson, again, is a very unknown asset in dynasty. At the very least, we know he's a good player, but we have, you know, Travis Etienne coming back next year. Urban Meyer is no longer in house. What is the new coaching staff going to think about him? Now two coaches removed from when James Robinson was initially picked up. So a lot, you know, up in the air with him. So with Javante Williams, you're getting a locked and loaded stud running back who is the most talented player in this deal by far and is going to be probably alone in his backfield for the next two to three years. So that is great news. Great trade for Wyatt there. Let's get into SGT warded his trades. So he thought basically he was a contender and he ended up missing the playoffs. So he decided to ship off some of his older players at the deadline. And for those of you guys that might be in limbo right now, maybe you just missed the playoffs. You have a bunch of older players and you're like, shit, am I gonna have to sell everybody in order to get this thing turned around? This is what he did. And I think some of these trades are good. Some of these trades, maybe, you know, a little bit more even or not so good. So we're going to start with the first trade where he traded away Zeke, Keenan Allen, and two second round picks, both projected to be mid to late in exchange for Christian McCaffrey and Chuba Hubbard. So he locks down the Carolina Panthers backfield there. Again, Christian McCaffrey is a guy that is going to be a very, very divisive topic for Dynasty going forward because we have a guy that is, you know, in the tail end of his prime, as you guys might, you know, expect for a running back because their shelf life is very low. But a guy like Christian McCaffrey, who is a pass catching running back, probably has a little bit longer of a shelf life than a guy like Chris Carson or Nick Chubb or Dalvin Cook, who get their primary value from running up the middle. Christian McCaffrey, I think, is going to hold his value a little bit longer. Now, again, we have a guy that is in danger of becoming another Todd Gurley situation where once an elite running back, he gets a couple injuries and suddenly nobody wants anything to do with him. So it is a very risky trade to make, but I do think you're giving up a piece like Zeke, who I think is already in that category of, of potentially a Todd Gurley type of uh, fantasy asset. Keenan Allen, who's an older wide receiver and two second round picks. I think this is a risk that I'm willing to take on a guy like Christian McCaffrey, who I still view as an elite fantasy asset as long as he's on the field. Trade number two, 2024 first in exchange for Cordero Patterson and Hollywood Brown. So he got the first round pick and he traded away those two players. I think that's a pretty fair deal to make. Hollywood Brown might be um, 
you know, a little bit underrated in terms of his dynasty value going forward. We have a young, talented receiver who's attached to Lamar Jackson, who's shown the ability to command targets. Now that's something that I think is a little bit underlooked. And if, if Hollywood Brown is going to go for a 2024 first and Cordero Patterson's being thrown on top of that, I think I'd be sending out offers for Hollywood Brown right now, because I know Rashad Bateman's the shiny toy and everybody loves Rashad Bateman, but Hollywood Brown has been everything that we wanted Rashad Bateman to be so far. So I'm willing to throw out some offers for Hollywood Brown if this is his value. And I would equate this, if you can get Hollywood Brown for anything other than a first round pick in the next two drafts, I think you're getting a pretty good value. So if you can get him for a second rounder and a third rounder in 2022 and 2023, I think that's a great deal for a guy like Hollywood Brown. Trade number three, Brandon Ayuk, a late second, a third uh, in exchange for a 2024 first and a 2023 second. I think this is a good move. Brandon Ayuk, again, another young, talented receiver we've seen produce in the NFL, starting to get his legs back under him a little bit more. I think those seconds kind of cancel each other out. So it's basically Brandon Ayuk and a third for a 2024 first. I think that's a good trade. I'm, will, I'm still willing to give up a late first round pick in exchange for Brandon Ayuk because I know what I saw from him as a rookie and I know what I've seen from him in spurts this season. So the final team and the final trades that we're going to get into, I'm just going to speed through these a little bit because I don't want this video to go too long. But Tano's trades, non-super flex, PPR, no tight end premium. That is the scoring format of all these trades. You guys should be able to see it on the screen right now. And this is a textbook example of capitalizing on people thinking that players are buy lows. Now, Denzel Mims has done virtually nothing in his NFL career. And there's going to be people that still believe in him because for whatever reason, maybe they liked him coming out of college or, you know, he, they're holding on to the high draft capital, whatever the case is. Denzel Mims has proven nothing in the NFL and he had proven nothing his rookie year coming into this year too. So it wasn't very hard for me to fade Denzel Mims and to trade him away if I had him on any rosters, if people were touting him as a buy low candidate, because we've seen the history of guys that don't produce as rookies when they're given the opportunity. And that's what, you know, we saw with Denzel Mims and Jalen Rager and some of these other guys that first was projected to be mid to late when he made this trade, that first is now the one Oh three. So he essentially got the one Oh three for Denzel Mims and an early second rounder. So the, the second rounder that he traded away ended up becoming the 201, but that is a big difference to me. The 103 for Denzel Mims and the 201 is a huge, huge difference. So you're, you're basically trading away Denzel Mims for you know a Traylon Burks and Isaiah Spiller or Brees Hall in a non-superflex. So I think that is a phenomenal trade to make. Great job on that one. Definitely lucked out that the pick ended up being very high. Trade number two, you get Brandon Ayuk in exchange for Darius Slayton and two third round picks. I don't need to spend a whole lot of time on this one. This one's a slam dunk. You won that trade easily. I, I would take Brandon Ayuk um, in exchange for Darius Slayton and two second round picks, to be honest. So I think you definitely won that. Trade number three, you got Baker Mayfield, Austin Hooper, and a third rounder in 2023 in exchange for Tyler Johnson, Evan Ingram, um, You know, two fourth rounders and a second rounder. Again, I'm not the biggest Baker Mayfield fan, but he's the former first overall pick. He has shown that he can play to some degree. I'm not really sure what his contract situation is going to work out to be. This isn't a super flex league though. So that does definitely make his value a little bit less because we haven't really seen him produce at a high level in fantasy quite yet. And in a one quarterback league, just how many uh, times are you going to be starting a guy like this? So I would say this is kind of just like a noise trade. I guess I'll take the Baker Mayfield side because I think he's the best asset in this trade, but it's not by a whole lot. And I think some of these picks end up uh, might end up being a little bit better than Baker Mayfield, especially that second rounder in 2022. So again, kind of neutral about that trade. Trade number four, he ended up trading. Uh, basically, this is an interesting trade. I never see this you know, usually happen, but he traded away two of his first round picks in exchange for somebody else's first round pick. So basically what he traded away was two late first round picks in exchange for an early first round pick. And that first round pick ended up becoming the one of two. So again, if you're able to spot that, maybe you look at somebody's team who, uh, you know, somebody else holds their first rounder and you look at their team and you realize, Hey, their team is, you know, producing above their means or they're going to, you know, have a rough finish to the season based on their schedules or whatever the case is. And you want to trade for their first round pick, assuming, you know, the owner that currently has it is probably valuing it as like a mid pick, but I think it's going to be more so of an early first round pick. I'm willing to make trades like that if you guys can pull that off. So if you guys did enjoy this video, again, leave a like, comment any of your thoughts down below, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Stay tuned for Friday. Me and Danny are going to be redoing a 2021 rookie mock draft, two rounds of all the guys that we've seen already perform in their rookie seasons. We're going to talk about how we would redraft that, knowing the information that we know now. So like I said, subscribe, like, comment, Hit the join button if you want to become a member of the channel, get priority access to comments during our live streams and on our videos, et cetera, some badges, emotes, et cetera, and also some polls and potentially some members only live streams coming pretty soon. So peace out guys. I'll talk to you soon.